What was it like for you, Kate? Uh, let me just backtrack a little bit. Uh, I first discovered the world of Michael Kidd in 1954. I was in the Air Force Station in France, and I took a three-day pass and went to London. I went to see a show. It was Can Can. As I sat in the audience watching the quadrille, I knew that I wanted to be a Michael Kidd dancer one day. I remember the young lady who played the role of Claudine. This, this was 1954, 50-some odd years ago. It was Jillian Lim. Wow. Yeah. Never forgot that. OK, I come to New York. <laughs> uh, discharged from the service in 56. Uh, 1960, I'm hired to do a uh, nightclub show in San Francisco. I'm about to get fired because they're ask I'm asking for my salary every week. Oh. Destry rides again, comes into town. And I went to see it. I was lucky enough to get the mayor's seat, front row center. And I had a friend I knew in the show, Bob Maxwell. And I waved at him. He says, come backstage. So I did. He said, one of the kids gave us notice tonight. They need another dancer. So I went there the next day, auditioned, got the job. I was the only dancer there, but I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, come 1966, I got back from another, uh, I was out in Calgary, Canada, and I called my friends Dominic Salamara and Stan Mason. And they said, oh, we're doing Holly Go Lightly. <laughs> says, Michael needs another dancer. He just let someone go today. I said, OK. Well, I already done the national tour of Carnival and Destry, so I knew the Merrick office. And I called them up. And I said, I understand Michael's having an audition. Can you tell me where and when? Well, I went and auditioned. Tony Rodente gave the audition. The combinations were difficult. Uh, and there were about 15 to 20 boys there. And I knew Michael was not happy with any of us. And he was talking back and forth. Could you tell? Uh, it was just the look on his face. It was, it was a studio. It was in the studio uh, rather than in a theater. And uh, they talked a few minutes and they said, uh, okay, improvise Charleston. And I went, ah. and he said, you, you've got the job. <laughs> he called me over Lovely. and he said to me, why couldn't you do that before? I said, well, I'm worried about remembering the steps. I'm trying to show you that I have technique. Uh, I said, it, it just didn't occur to me. So I went to rehearsal the next, the next morning, and I found out that Michael had a sense of humor. Yeah. We were uh, rehearsed at the Capitol Hotel in the Grand Ballroom, no air conditioning. In the middle of the room is a fan. Every, I got there early. I was talking to everybody that I knew and saying hello. Michael walks in, walks up to the fan, pulls the switch for the fan. Everybody goes, <laughs> and they go against the walls. I'm left in the center of the room. Michael looks at me and says, what's the matter with you? He says, I don't have a partner. <laughs> Judy Dunford became my partner. What was the experience of the Michael Kidd experience for you? Well, it was brief because unfortunately Tiffany did not go a long time. Michael was not difficult at all to work with, as, as everybody can attest to here. He was quite pleasant and, you know, very sweet. Uh, for the girls, we didn't do that much. It was the boys, of course, because it was Holly's show. So the girls, we ended up, I think, Carol, what, doing three numbers uh, eventually. I got fired on the radio. Oh yeah. <laughs> the then we get <laughs> then we get into I mean all the problems that were Tiffany's, but Michael was wonderful to work with. I mean very short period of time that we had him. Uh, but mostly it was just trying to survive Tiffany's, which was not an easy thing to do. Well you well you did it. Yeah, well and I was here. the union yeah. deputy, so yeah, it was right. <laughs> well, that's a tough job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to share with you a, an image of Michael that I got from Sheila last week. Um, she told me, she said, you know, she was in the house and looking out in the yard. And I know the yard. It's a big, grassy area with a lot. I think there are trees and I think there's vegetables. And 
Michael was that kind of guy. He just like he would find a way to have country in the city. And she said, I was looking outside and I saw Michael holding a heavy object in his hand. And he was rehearsing his acceptance speech for the Oscar. <laughs> and he had an audience. There was one little squirrel. <laughs> and somehow that image grabbed me about, it was so sweet. And I may not have some of the details right, Sheila, but I, what I did get right was the tone in your voice. There was su such warmth as you described this, you know, and it was, it just felt so intimate, and I thank you for that. Um, what was the thing you were- About being fired on the radio? Yeah, we'll close with this one. Okay. All right, um, this is for Douglas. Douglas, if you're out there, I told you I would have a story about breakfast at Tiffany's for you. Um, as we all know, breakfast at Tiffany's had many transmigrations and many permutations and everything, and so it was many shows at different times, and um, Edward Albee came in toward the end, and um, I was at home getting ready to go for the matinee, and I was brushing long hair at the time, and I had the radio on, and they announced that Edward Albee was taking over breakfast at Tiffany's and was letting all of the women in the show go except for Mary Tyler Moore and Sally Kellerman. <laughs> well, I stopped brushing my hair and I, I was one of those women, so I was like, I think I've just been fired over the radio. So I go to the theater, it's before cell phones, I go to the theater and sure enough, we were not in the show that afternoon. We oh, sat uh, in the house and we made two weeks severance pay. Right, we got paid. <laughs> that was it and I was fired on the radio. <laughs> no, that's amazing. And thank you all, I really appreciate everything. personal phone call, a uh, conversation with Merritt Thompson. Oh, yes. How many of you do not know Merritt Thompson oh, somewhere oh. between, you know, yeah. the early 50s and the right. late 60s? Couldn't be with us tonight. He was ecstatic to hear about what was going on and asked me to say hello to all of those chorus dancers. He was the consummate oh, dance well, captain or whatever. Yeah, he was. And so you have a special personal hello yeah. for Merritt. Great. Okay, okay we're going to show a clip of little Abner now. So uh, yeah, don't get off the stage yet. We'll, we'll go after the clip. Uh, come yeah, we, with me. Come with me, Carolyn. Right? Yeah. Okay. You come over here. Roll that clip, Ed.